some of you think failure is the end of the world. Well, I'm here to tell you otherwise. And if you know why, go ahead and stay tuned to After the Music. Welcome to the Lazenby Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Lazenby, and I'm here to help you along your journey to your success. I will do this by sharing my experiences, as well as give tips and tricks I've learned through my current journey to receive my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Throughout this season, I'll be covering topics including myths about college, transfer advice, networking, and much more. So get your pen and paper ready as we dive into each episode to take in something that gets you closer to your success. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of the Lazen B Experience Podcast. We are finally here. We are here at the 10th and final episode of season two. I would like to say thank you to everyone who has been listening to every episode this season. I really appreciate appreciate everything um, from listening to commenting to liking to sharing to subscribing. I say thank you and I hope you continue to listen as I continue on with future seasons. And if this is your first episode, which is totally fine, I want to say thank you also for tuning in to this episode, which I think will be a great episode. Um, But I also encourage you to go back and listen to the last nine episodes as well when you have time um, of season two. And if you haven't listened to season one, to go ahead and go back to those episodes as well. But let's move on. Let's get into this episode. We are season two, episode number 10, where I will be discussing failures. Now, this is a tough subject that I know a lot of people like to avoid, especially on social media. All you see is success. You see people living a best life. You see people getting awards. You see people getting their dream house. You see people getting married. But one thing you don't see, one of the important things that you don't see is the the failure or the things that they tried and they didn't be successful at. You don't see that a lot on social media. And I feel like it's important that everyone understands that it's definitely okay to fail at something. It's, it's kind of important to fail at something because it helps you. And I'm going to get into these different things surrounding failure. But before I get into those things about failure, I do want to get into a little story time. So in the beginning of my college career, I must admit I have failed plenty of exams. I have failed plenty of tests. I have even failed some classes. But unfortunately, I want to say unfortunately, my solution to these failures was to not just take the courses that I failed the next semester, but also take the courses that I was planning on taking the next semester and try to pass all those classes um, so I can stay on track to graduate when I was supposed to graduate. That end up not working. And unfortunately, it made things worse. And eventually, that's one of the reasons why I end up taking a year off of school. Even after I came back, got my associate's degree, transferred to my current school, I was still trying to do too much. And it wasn't just me trying to take a be the same. It wasn't the same problem where I was trying to take more courses so I can graduate at a certain time. I was working over 40 hours a week with more than one job, sometimes two or three jobs. I was taking over 12 credits per semester and I was still trying to be as much as I can involved in extracurriculars, AKA NSBE, AKA the National Society of Black Engineers. Um, But I had to learn the hard way, unfortunately, that I can't do everything and I need needed to only focus on what was important to me right then and there, which was one work because that 
is what provide my li- my living arrangements and being able to support myself in school, which is why I am here to get a degree. So I had to learn that since I have to work and support myself and to pay for school, I have to take less credits each semester. Something I, sh- if I w- would have done in the beginning, I probably could have already graduated. But that's neither here or there. But because right now I have decided to take less credits, be l- not full time for the rest of my college career, my graduation date is definitely getting pushed back. But I also understand that just because of that doesn't mean I won't be successful and I won't find a career that I want to have. I understand that because of my experiences, because of my network, um, because of my degree that I'm going to receive, which is in electrical engineering, I will be able to find not just a job, but a career that I am happy and proud to have. So that's a a little bit of a story time. Um, Now I want to get into the main part of this episode, which I will be talking about five different important things I think you should know about failure. So let's get into it. Number one, understand failure is inevitable. You being good at everything you try is really slim to none, which is totally fine. You don't have to be good or great at everything you try. Sometimes the longer you avoid failure, so the longer you just stay at a level where you know you won't fail, the more likely the bigger the failure will be once you um, finally do fail. So you shouldn't be, I mean, of course you want to try to avoid failure, but you're You shouldn't try to avoid failure by not trying. You should try to avoid failure by trying to be successful, if that makes any sense. Another thing, the fear of failure can cause procrastination, which is a problem that I'm currently working on. And then that can eventually cause you to fail at what you're trying to do. So because you procrastinate on something, you eventually end up not doing it or you doing uh, horrible on that assignment or that project or whatever. And then you do end up failing where in the beginning, if you did not procrastinate and you did a little bit every day instead of wait, trying to wait to the end to do it, you probably would have gotten a better grade or learned something or or pass that class. So procrastination is definitely uh, can be a cause of failure. And like I said, this is something I struggle with sometimes and something I'm working on um, pretty much every day, especially when it comes to my schoolwork and studying for exams and that kind of thing. Now, just because failure is inevitable doesn't mean it's the worst thing in the world. A lot of time failure mostly mean you have to start over on something or redo it. But now you have more knowledge and experience with that thing. Now, of course, there are situations where failure can and can impact a lot, but it's not everything you try in life. It's not every situation that you do. So, again, just because it's inevitable doesn't mean it's um the end of the world doesn't mean you're never going to be successful. In some cases, it means that you will be successful if you push past that failure. So number one, understand failure is in in failure is inev- inevitable. I always can't say that word for some reason. But anyway, moving on to number two, failure can lead to your success. Now, I know it's cliche to say this, but sometimes failure or a lot of times failure is necessary for your success. Now, one reason why I say this is because failure with will either make you give up and try something else. And hopefully it leads you to try something that you can learn and continue working on, or it will push you to gain more understanding of that subject that you failed at. Um, Failure will teach you um, lessons success won't or couldn't teach you. Um, In class, for me, 
when you get some, when I get a question right, I like after you get take your exam and your teacher give you back your exam. Um, when I look at over the my exam and see all the questions that I got right, I clearly or not clearly, but I just skip over those questions because I got it right and I feel like I don't need to look at them. But when it comes to the ones that I got wrong. I try and find the reason why I got it wrong and work on it and find um, the correct answer. So now I'm getting a deeper understanding of that particular question. While the question I answered correctly, I might not understand completely. I I just um, understood how to answer that question. So just because you fail doesn't mean you can't learn from it. It actually means that you can't, you can learn from it. If you fail, if failure do discourage you to continue something that might, um, just get you to try something or find something that you're more passionate about. I kind of said this earlier. And then hopefully if you find something that you're passionate about, <clears throat> passionate about, you're willing to fail at it and you continue to um, grow from that failure. So going number two, remember failure can definitely lead to success. Going on to number three. Now, for me, I believe there are two different ways you can fail at something. Now, first way, I guess, I couldn't find a better way of saying it, so I said two different ways. But anyway, the first way, failing due to not putting in an effort. Now, this is the worst way of failing because you not only fail, but you also have nothing to learn from from it like you have nothing to learn from that failure sure you can say i learned that i have to put in the effort in order for me to be successful but since you already know that beforehand should you already know that in order for you to be successful you have to uh put in an effort some type of effort you also waste time sometimes money if you're going to school or something or building a business either having to redo something basically with nothing to go off of or try something or do something new. So it's basically you're wasting a lot of time. And again, sometimes money if you fail because you decided just not to do anything. Um, This could happen due to the fear of failure. Like I talked about before, um, because of lack of discipline, in or not having an interest in that subject. So definitely try to, I mean, I guess you can learn something from not giving an effort. You can learn that why you didn't give an effort. Was it because you had a fear of failure? Did you not have the discipline? Did you not have an interest in that subject? And you can um, either go from there as far as trying to do that over and be successful at it, or you can try something new that you do have an interest in. And then the second way of failing is basically the opposite, which is failing after giving an effort. So this is what I've been talking about for this episode so far um, when it comes to like leading to success. So even though you failed, you gave an effort, which can bear some fruit and teach you something about yourself or about the subject that you um, failed at. That effort may also lead to paths that you didn't know exist or that you didn't know that you are interested in. Uh, My example of that is like, let's say you're taking, I said, a photography class and some reason you just wasn't getting it and you didn't pass the class. But in the midst of taking that class and giving an effort, you realize that it wasn't actual taking pictures that you enjoyed about photography. It might have been like the editing process or something like that. So just because you failed at at a certain course didn't mean that you didn't learn anything. It actually meant that you learned what you enjoy and would rather do than being a photographer. Um, This can also reveal your strengths and weaknesses so you can better assess your future steps and goals. So like I was just saying, it can, in that that previous example, 
Um, they could be like, I didn't, I don't, now I don't want to build a photography business. I want to build a business around editing photos or editing videos or something like that. And they can have other steps and other goals that they want to accomplish that they didn't know they wanted beforehand. So those are my two ways. I believe you can fail at something going on to number four, learning not to be afraid of failure. So this is very important to learn because I feel like once you get into your head that one, eventually I'm going to fail at something, but two, not being afraid that you're going to fail at it would definitely help you continue on when it comes to um, like being disciplined and keep going even after you have failed. This is also something I'm continuing to learn myself. And I feel like I am learning that it's okay to fail. Um, Just make sure that you did learn something from it and you don't repeat those same mistakes. Uh, Sometimes you may feel like if I didn't give a real effort, I didn't really fail. I just didn't try. But honestly, is that any better than um, than failing or or the, the, the alternative. Another thing, one of the first ways to get over the fear, the fear of failure is knowing and understanding is not the end of the road. Like I've said before, just because you fail at something, for the most part, doesn't mean it's going to make you not be successful or whatever subject you might have failed in make you not be successful in that field. Just because you failed at something don't mean you can't get back up and try again and be better at it than the first time or second time or third time. Another important thing is to stop caring about what somebody will think of you or say about you. Nine times out of 10, they're probably going through something or afraid of something as well. This also includes your family, your friends, social media, anything that you might feel will judge you for failing at something which might stop you from trying something because you feel that you might fail at it understand this your life is about you and what you want to be successful at and sometimes success does come with failure um so don't worry about what other people think about you they're not in your shoes they're not paying your bills they're not they're not you so don't worry about what they think. And I know it's easier said than done, um, but definitely each day you should be working on not caring what other people think about you or what you're trying to accomplish. Something else that helps me is realizing the goat of anything has failed at something. Sometimes they have failed at that same thing that they are considered the goat of. Um, some examples I want to bring up include Oprah Renf- Oprah Oprah I can't even say her name Oprah w- Winfrey. Now I know a lot of people talk about her when it comes to failure and what she went through, but Oprah Oprah Winfrey is one of the most wealthiest people alive today. Not just wealthiest women or wealthiest African American, but one of the wealthiest people alive. Was the motive from her first? Oh, was the motive from her job as the news anchor because she, quote, wasn't fit for television. And we all know that's a lie. Another example, um, Albert Einstein, one of the smartest people, was, wasn't able to speak until he was four and was told he would, quote, never amount to anything. And again, we know that was a lie as well. And then the last one I have is Shonda Rhimes. She's the creator of TV shows like Grey's Anatomy, um, Scandal, and many other TV shows. She actually failed at creating TV shows even after she had successful ones. So just because um, you do have success, again, you're, doesn't mean you're you're bulletproof from failure. But just because you again you have failure doesn't mean that you won't have success within that same field. So those are some of the people that give me inspiration or motivate me to continue along my path because just because I felt that something doesn't mean I can't um, be successful at it. And then lastly, 
uh, when it comes to learning not to be afraid of failure. Start looking at and having a mind frame that your failures are a stepping stone for your success and not a setback. Now, some things that might help you, I haven't done this, but one thing that might help you realize this is um, writing affirmations and you can read them to yourself on a daily, daily basis. This can definitely, this repetition of of saying words of encouragement and that kind of thing to yourself can definitely help you when it comes to times when it feels like you won't be successful or you might fail at something. Um, they can definitely be, be that extra push to help you continue on that path. And now here we are on the last um, thing I want to talk about when it comes to failure. Number five, how to learn from your failures. I think this is very important because um, even if you do understand that failure is in, in, inevitable, um, if even if you feel that way, um, if you can't learn from your failure, then you can't be successful after your failures. So the number one and number two things to me is to be self-aware and honest with yourself. If you can't go, I mean, you can't go far without understanding your strengths and weaknesses. And you can't go anywhere without being truthful with yourself about the things that you need to work on. So definitely understand you need to be self-aware about your your strengths, your weaknesses, your flaws, the things you are great at, um, the things you need to work on. And then definitely be being honest with yourself. If there's not one person to be honest with is definitely yourself. So you can lie to everybody else, which I don't condone or believe you should. But if you're going to lie to people, at least don't lie to yourself because like you're the only person who can get past your failures and get to your successes. But the only way you can do that is being honest with yourself and working on those things that you need to work on. If you can pinpoint exactly where you fail, go back to those areas and work on them. Like I talked about in the, the class example um, with myself, when it when I got my test or my homework back, I didn't just look at my the things I co- got correct. I looked at the things I got wrong and I worked on them and I tried to understand them. So when it came back to those same type of questions, I can understand where I where I went wrong and go a different way. Now, I know this is, again, um, probably easier to say than to do, but try not to repeat the same mistakes over, especially in the same place um, you made the failure or you failed at before. Of course, that's kind of self-explanatory where you don't want to do the, do a similar problem than you did before and use the same technique that got the wrong answer. So definitely try different things, even if it's kind of like out of the box kind of, or not what you would normally do because what you normally do got the wrong answer. Lastly, when it comes to how to learn from your failure, <clears throat> failure, don't be afraid to ask for guidance from someone who may have been where you're, you're going or where, where you want to be. Um, again, I'm going to bring up Nesby. We have, I have a network of people who've been through all the classes that I've been through and have old like homework and old, um, guys that they use when it came to studying. So they can pass that on to myself and other students and other, uh, Nesby members to help us. So we don't make those same mistakes that they may have made. So this can not only help you figure out your failures, but maybe help you avoid failures in the future like I just was talking about. Um, But those are the five things that I wanted to bring up and talk about when it comes to failure. Um, I hope we, you were able to learn something and, under, and you really understand and grapple with the idea that just because you fail at something doesn't mean you can't be successful at it.
Uh, but before I let you go today, I do want to give a little advice of the week. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is by Albert Einstein, and it says, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. So if you see yourself failing around the same spot or around the same thing, it might be smart to try something new when it comes to those areas or thinking outside the box or asking for guidance or doing something that you normally wouldn't have done so you don't fail at that same spot. Um, next, um, stop being afraid to fail. Embrace it and use it as a stepping, uh, use it as a life lesson and stepping stone to your success. So I, I think I said this a few times throughout this episode, but again, failure is not the end all be all. And if you use it as a stepping stone in a life lesson instead of a setback, it will propel you to your success that you are aiming towards. Lastly, in order for your failure to work for you and not against you, you have to put in the effort. So I said this earlier with the two ways I believe you can fail. Um, but if you don't put in that effort, just when you fail, then you're not going to learn much from it. And you might repeat those same mistakes. You will repeat those same mistakes and stay in that same cycle of failure where if you put in that effort each time hopefully you learn something and you um, change something and you make that correction and you continue to be pushing towards your goals and and becomes become successful but that is everything that i have for this episode and for this season of the Lads and Be Experienced podcast. As always, I would like to thank you for listening to this episode and every other episode of the Lads and Be Experienced podcast. If you have any further things you would like to talk about this episode, whether it's questions, comments, or concerns, you can definitely hit me up, email me at lazenbeexperience at gmail.com. That's L A Z E N B Y experience at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to follow, like, share, and subscribe on all the platforms that you like to listen to your podcast. That's including YouTube, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, pretty much anywhere that you listen to podcasts, you can find um, these episodes. You can also find season one available on all those platforms as well. So if you haven't had a chance to go back and listen to those episodes and, and gain that that information from those episodes, I will highly encourage you and appreciate it if you went back and listened to those episodes. Lastly, as always, you can go to my blog at lazenbeexperience.wordpress.com and you can see or you can read the same um, episodes in my blog post that I post every week. But it also, I should say, but, but also there are other uh, blog posts that I have posted before I even started my podcast. So you can definitely have a lot to read and hopefully gain something from throughout um, those blog posts. Again, thank you for listening to not just this episode, but this season of the Lazenby Experience podcast. I hope you learned something. Um, and I, I really look forward to the next season. Um, each season is probably right now is going to be around 10 episodes. Um, you can look forward to that season sometime early next year. Um, but as always, you can continue or you should continue your journey until you reach your success. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Lads and Be Experienced podcast. I hope you're able to get something out of it to help you with your success. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow, like, share, and subscribe on all platforms, including YouTube, Facebook, and Apple Podcasts at the Lads and Be Experience. Have questions about this episode or have topics you would like me to cover in the future, send me an email at lazenbeexperience at gmail.com. 
That's L A Z E N B Y experience at gmail.com. Lastly, I would like to give a huge shout out to Jamari Michael of Indigo Entertainment Group for the instrumentals you heard throughout this episode. Again, thank you for listening to the Lazen to Be Experienced podcast. And until next time, continue your journey until you reach your success.